What do non-alcoholic beer and your sister's vagina have in common? They both taste the same, but it's just not right. <laughs> What's up, weirdos? Scott here. Thanks again for visiting the channel. As always, I appreciate it. If this is your first time on the channel, you probably just left. Uh, but thanks for watching anyway. Uh, <laughs> my, <laughs> my wife tells me my jokes aren't actually funny. Uh, it's just how funny I think they are that makes everybody laugh. And either way, I'll take it. Um, <laughs> Uh, real quick, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, do me a favor, follow me on Instagram. Uh, let's underscore do it up. L E T S underscore D O I T U P. Uh, and if you'd like to send a knife or knives into the channel for review, just send me an email at let's underscore. That's my email. That's my uh, Instagram. Let's D I U seventy nine at gmail dot com. Uh, so Send me an email. I will send you my shipping address. Uh, if you want to send me the knife or knives, uh, I will spend a week or two with them, <clears throat> do the review, and then send them back to you as soon as I can. Uh, L-E-T-S-D-I-U-79 at gmail.com. Uh, and today, uh, we're doing a quick uh, video on some of the best knife companies uh, to start out with for a collection. Uh, but first, uh, I just want to remind you guys uh, real quick, uh, these are the two giveaway knives that I'm going to be giving away for my 1,000 subscriber giveaway. Uh, as of the last time I looked, I'm only 72 subscribers away from 1,000 subscribers. I'm very, very excited about this, guys. Uh, and I can't wait to give these guys away. Uh, this is the Saviti Amorite. Very good action. Uh, fantastic blade. Uh, some people call this reverse tanto. It's it's kind of like, I feel like it's kind of like sometime, some kind of a, a modified version of a sheep's foot or a Warncliffe. Uh, I don't really feel like reverse Tanto is a real blade shape. Uh, it's just, I don't know, it just bothers me. Um, and then this one uh, obviously is a, another button lock by Saviti. This is the Storm Howl, a uh, little bit of a smaller knife. So if, you know, if you're interested in bigger knives, uh, hopefully, you know, this one would probably be more up your alley. If you're interested in regular EDC size knives, this one would probably be uh, your cup of tea here. Uh, but these are both fantastic knives, great action, great Damascus steel on these guys. Uh, Saviti's Damascus is lower in Damascus, but it's still a decent steel. Uh, I just wanted to get something with a little bit more uh, pizzazz or a little bit more, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing for my 1,000 subscriber giveaway. These were a little bit more expensive, so these were like 100 bucks a piece, somewhere around there, 110, 115 bucks a piece. Uh, and I'm very excited to give these away to you guys. I just wanted to let you guys know uh, that that's coming up. So. Talk to your friends, uh, see if maybe they want to subscribe to my channel and then they'll get a chance to uh, enter to win these knives as well. Uh, okay, but like I said, we're gonna be doing a, a quick list today. My, my, um, my list of knives that I feel are the best knives that you can start a collection with. Uh, these are the knives that I basically kind of built my collection with uh, before I got into the higher end stuff. Uh, but this is gonna range anywhere between uh, 30 or 40 bucks all the way up to 300. I kind of feel like not necessarily in the budget realm, uh, but when people enter the knife community, uh, they usually start out with like CVV, CGRB, stuff like that. Uh, and then they start moving on to a little bit more expensive stuff. Uh, and then once you get up to like three, 350, 400 bucks, uh, that's when you're getting into, in my opinion, kind of the higher end production uh, knives uh, area. So I kind of feel like this is like maybe the first year of your collection, uh, of your collecting. Uh, these are companies that I would start out with. Uh, so I'm going to get started with the Rat Model 1 uh, and the Rat Model 2. These are knives that everybody in the knife community knows about, uh, loves and admires. These are great hard use knives. Uh, they're only 40 bucks, you know, so if this is something that you lose or you break or whatever, you're really not out a whole bunch of money. Uh, these are both in Grivery. They do come in G10 versions, but those are a little more expensive. I think those are closer to like 100 bucks or 120 bucks. Uh, Aus 8 steel. Um, the uh, the blades are. This blade is painted. This is not a coating or anything like that. Uh, and you know you've got just Teflon washers in there. Uh, 
uh, liner locks. These are just your basic knife shaped knives that you can use at a work site or construction, anything like that. It doesn't matter if it gets dirty, doesn't matter if it's broken, doesn't matter if it gets lost. Well, I mean, it, it matters, but <laughs> you're not, I, you're not out 300 bucks, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, so in my opinion, starting a, a collection, starting to get into knives, uh, this is the territory I would start out with. Uh, you know, once you figure out what you want, what you like, what you don't like, uh, then you can kind of start moving up the ladder a little bit. Uh, but these are just easily accessible knives that aren't superly, superly, <laughs> that aren't super uh, expensive. And, you know, these aren't sought after by everybody in the knife community or anything like that, at least not anymore. Um, yeah, they're just, they're fantastic knives uh, to use for everyday use, getting them dirty, getting them broke. It doesn't really matter. Uh, next up on the list is uh, Kubi. Now, I only have one Kubi knife that I'm willing to show off, and that's the Carve. Uh, this is an absolutely amazing budget knife. Uh, this guy is going to run you around $48 uh, on Kubi's site. Uh, I'm sure they sell these on Blade HQ and Knife Center and stuff like that. I don't know if you're going to be able to get a better price, but um, it's it's a really, really good knife. Just you've got the Tonto shape here. You've got a little bit of a... You know, a thumb ramp here with some jimping G10 scales. Uh, this is a nested liner lock, which is nice. Uh, you can see that I took the pocket clip off, but you just got a bent steel pocket clip for this guy. Fantastic action. Drops down with the liner lock, falls right back down into the handle. The flipper tab is the only deployment method, but you can reverse flick this uh, with the fuller there. Uh, and as you can see, just great action. Falls right back down into the handle. Uh, this is just a great everyday carry knife that you can, again, you can just beat the shit out of this thing. Doesn't really matter all that much because this is only going to run you just under uh, 50 bucks. Fantastic knife. Comfortable ergonomics on this thing are, are a joy to use. Uh, and you've, you've even got this little uh, forward finger choil up here that I can actually use. I've got big sausage fingers, but my finger fits in here pretty well. So this should work for just about anybody, whether you need to choke up on it or use the standard grip or whatever. And uh, this guy is in D2 steel, as you can see here. Uh, so yeah, fantastic knife. Absolutely love Kubi. I don't have a lot of Kubis, but that's only because by the time I got into Kubis, I was already graduating up into like a little bit more expensive knives. Uh, next up on the list is Civivi. Um, Civivi is probably one of the best companies that I can think of. Uh, when you're starting out in the knife community, you get like budget knives, sometimes a little bit more expensive knives, uh, but just very good quality, very good fit and finish, very good action. Um, their Damascus is pretty decent. Uh, the only reason that uh, I, I only have two Civivis is because I've either given the rest away or sold them or or whatever. So I, I used to have, I think, 25 or 30 Civivis, but I've only I've only got a few left now. Um, but this is the Civivi Praxis, which is probably one of the most popular knives in Civivi's lineup. Uh, and this is the Civivi Backlash. Uh, honestly, I think this is the backlash for anybody getting into the knife community, somebody with a normal size hand. Uh, the Backlash is probably going to be your best bet. <clears throat> You've got a nice little hollow ground blade here. This one I'm guessing is 8 CR, yeah, 8CR, 9CR, 18MOV. Uh, G10 Scales Liner Lock, which is kind of uh, coated in this uh, metallic blue color. Gives a nice little pop. Uh, you got a G10 Backspacer here, bent pocket clip, which I don't have on here. Um, just fantastic action. This isn't fall shut. You kind of have to shake it. Uh, but this is, I believe, running on... I think this is running on bearings. I could be wrong. Uh, the detent's a little light on this guy, uh, but it still works fine as long as you get the uh, the flipper tab the right way. Um, this is probably like the most knife-shaped knife I've ever seen, uh, and it's decent for everyday carry. It kind of goes along the lines as the uh, the the same lines as the Kubi Carve. Uh, you've got this generous finger choil up here. You've got a, a thumb ramp here, uh, and kind of the same aesthetics. Um, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a difference in the scales there, but just a very very comfortable knife overall. Uh, nice blade shape, hollow ground, fantastic slicer. Uh, this is a great knife for sure. Uh, the CVV Praxis obviously is going to be a little bit bigger. Uh, liner lock, G10 scales, kind of the same thing. These will these obviously come in either Damascus steel or standard D2 steel. Um, the Praxis is, is, in my opinion, the best CVV knife uh, that they make. I really love the Praxis. You've got a nice robust blade here. Um, very, very comfortable. Uh, same kind of uh, ergonomic lines as maybe the Shaman, uh, but 
just very, very comfortable. Uh, you can choke up on this guy. You don't have to choke up if you don't want to. A little bit of a thumb ramp here. Very comfortable, very nice slicer, flat ground blade. Uh, it's just, Civivi is a very, very, very good company to start out with. Uh, if you're looking to start in the $50, $60 range, uh, you can find a lot of stuff from Civivi. They've got a lot of variety um, and their fit and finish, their quality <clears throat> of uh, materials, all that stuff is, is fantastic from them, uh, especially if you're just starting out in the knife community. Uh, next up, we have CJRB. I didn't mention to you guys, I'm sorry, uh, just in case you don't already know. Uh, so Civivi is a subsidiary or whatever you want to call it of uh, Wii Knives. Uh, Civivi is their budget brand, and they also have a lower-end budget brand called Sencut. So if you see those two, um, <clears throat> if you see Civivi or Sencut, they're both kind of the same company. It's just Sencuts are a little bit less expensive knives. Uh, Civivis are a little bit more expensive, and then obviously Wii knives uh, can get pretty doggone expensive. Uh, next up is uh, CGRB. Kind of the same concept, uh, except we're going through artisan knives instead of Wii knives. Uh, Artisan's knives, Artisan Knives uh, budget brand is CGRB. Uh, they have their own steel, the, their proprietary steel that they've made, ARRPM9. Uh, and they've got a bunch of different models. Same thing as Civivi, good fit and finish, good quality materials, uh, and just so much to choose from. It's, it's, it, it almost make your head spin. They have so many models, uh, different um, aesthetics, different uh, cutting tasks, things like that. Uh, there's so much to choose from from this company. Uh, their quality, I would say, is pretty much on par with Civivi, uh, but there's a few knives that they have that I'm not, you know, I, whether it's the action or the fit and finish, it's just, they seem a little bit like maybe one point lower than Civivi, in my opinion, uh, but they're still very, very good knives. Affordable, good quality. Uh, their g is a little thick for my liking, but that's just you know, a personal preference thing. Uh, this is the CGRB Crag, probably my favorite knife from this company. Uh, I love cleaver knives, um, as you can see. <laughs> uh, and this is the CGRB Tigris. Uh, this came with white scales originally <clears throat> on top of black scales. I dyed the white scales red. That's kind of why they have some fading here on the bottom and stuff. You got this little aluminum backspacer here, which kind of looks a little bit dumb to me, but uh, this knife was just... I had been in the knife community for about six, eight months uh, when this was released, and I really loved the look of this blade. Uh, the action on this guy is fantastic. Most of the stuff that CGRB comes out with is running on bearings, uh, stainless steel liner locks, stuff like that. Uh, but they do have some other lock types uh, that you can look into. Uh, but these two companies, uh, Civivi and CGRB, in my opinion, uh, are the best companies to start out with when you're starting a collection uh, in the knife community. Uh, next up, we're going to get a little bit more expensive now. Uh, the classic knife that everybody and their mother owns, uh, the Buck 110, uh, which is going to run you about 65 bucks. Uh, I got lucky with this guy. I found this on Walmart, and they messed up on the price, so they they had it listed on the site for like 30 bucks. Uh, so I had to go ahead and buy this guy. You've got the the wooden the wooden handle scales here. You've got some rivets that's used to keep the knife together and then you've got a back lock here which is kind of the same thing as a triad lock from cold steel but uh it's just a little bit um a little bit different this is probably the most classic knife that you can find uh buck knives are classics for a reason because they just work uh they're easy to use they're easy to put away uh this is a two-handed knife it's not a slip joint this is a back lock it's the only back lock that i own because i fucking hate back locks but everybody has to own a buck 110 right <laughs> I love this knife. It's absolutely fantastic. I don't carry it very often, um, but there's really not much that you can do to this knife uh, to fuck it up. So uh, if there's, you know, if you're looking for a good quality knife that could last you forever uh, and under a hundred bucks, uh, you really can't go wrong uh, with a buck 110 unless you, you know, have to have a knife that you can open and close one handed. Uh, I can open this guy one handed. I can't close it one handed, obviously. Um, my wife can't close this with two hands, so <laughs> the back lock's a little bit stiff for her to be able to use. Um, okay, next up we've got Cold Steel. Uh, cold Steel, you can get anything ranging from 65 bucks uh, all the way up to hundreds and hundreds of dollars, uh, especially if you're looking at like the 4MAX. This is the 4MAX Scout. This is a much less expensive version uh, with Grivery scales. You've got the Axis Lock here, um, the Grivery Backspacer. Uh, and this is, I believe, OS 10, yes, OS 10A steel. Uh, now, the reason most people like these knives is because you've got a, a, 
a nice thick blade stock. These are good hard use overbuilt knives. Uh, and they've also got that access lock, which everybody knows in this community, uh, the, the access lock is the strongest lock on the market, which that's fantastic. I don't, I don't know, you know, unless you're using this guy like upside down to scale the face of a cliff. I, I, I don't know why the triad lock is necessary, but it's nice to have. It's, you know, bragging rights or whatever you want to call it. I've got a very, you know, uh, sturdy lock on my knife that it's not going to fail and cut my fingers off. Uh, this is uh, huge. This thing is gigantic. I love the 4Max Scout. I've used it before uh, out bushcrafting and, you know, cutting down small limbs off trees and stuff like that. You can use this for chopping. You can choke down on it. You can choke up on it uh, to give you a little bit more control. Um, this is good for skinning. Uh, it's a nice slicer. It's a flat ground blade. Uh, it doesn't go all the way to the top, so you, get, you, you do still have kind of a thick, um, <clears throat> a thick stock at the, uh, at the bevel. Um, but it's a, it's a very hard use knife. This is something that you can use for just about anything. It's not prohibitively expensive. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you the prices on these other guys. Let me put these down. So the, um, the backlash uh, is going to cost you around 30 bucks, uh, and the Praxis is going to cost you around 75. Now, if you get the Damascus version, it's going to be a little bit more. It's going to be just over $100, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, the CGRBs, uh, the Tigris is going to run you 50 or 60 bucks, uh, and the Crag is going to cost you around 45 uh, or $50, depending on which version you get. Uh, now, you, you can see that these are carbon fiber scales, but this is laminate carbon fiber. If you don't know what that is, it's basically just a piece of G10 uh, with one layer of carbon fiber on top. So obviously a little bit less, um, <clears throat> a little bit less high quality than the normal carbon fiber scales that we get. Uh, but you know, if you're if you're looking at a forty-five dollar knife, that's I think that's pretty goddamn good, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, and the Buck One Ten, like I said, is going to cost you around sixty-five bucks. Uh, so back to the cold steel. So the Four Max Scout, uh, the Four Max is going to cost you around seventy to eighty dollars, unless you're getting the regular Four Max, which that's going to cost you, I think, if memory serves properly, around three hundred bucks. Uh, the SR One Light here, uh, another big bruiser of a knife. Um, Look at the blade stock on this. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's, I think it's close to 100, excuse me, I think it's close to 187,000 on the blade stock thickness for this guy. You still got the triad lock here. You still got the Grivery scales, the Grivery backspacer. Why is this getting stuck? This was working fine a few minutes ago. Oh well. Um, so obviously you got thumb stud operation here. Uh, this is running on, I believe, Teflon washers. Might be, no, I'm sorry. These are phosphor bronze washers. Uh, so with the triad lock, all you got to do is push down on this button. Keep your finger as close to the front as possible so that you don't cut yourself. Uh, you can push this down and then it'll fall down into the handle and then you can just let it fall the rest of the way down. <clears throat> These things are made to be used and they're made to be used hard. Uh, these things are made for you to beat the shit out of them, throw them into a toolbox, uh, you know, whatever you need to do with these things, they will do without flinching. Um, you know, if you're looking for something gigantic and that you can use to cut a truck in half, the 4Max Scout is going to be the way to go. Uh, but if you're just looking for a good bushcrafting knife, something you can use for food prep, uh, feathering wood, stuff like that, possibly batoning, um, then the SR1 Lite is going to be the way to go. Now these both have premium models that are much more expensive. Uh, the SR1 Lite just has G10 scales and I believe it has S35 uh, VN blade steel. Uh, same thing with the 4Max. Uh, so that's why they're, they're more expensive. Uh, I think if you were to get the budget versions of these knives, I don't think you'd be disappointed in them at all. Uh, but if you get the more expensive versions, I don't think you'll be disappointed with those either, obviously. Uh, so... Next, we're going to go to the Spyderco knives. Um, out of all my knives in my collection, uh, people ask me, you know, what's your favorite knife company? And, you know, do I say <clears throat> Vero or Chris Reeve or Hinderer? No. I usually, when people ask me what my favorite knife company is, uh, I tell them that it's Spyderco. <clears throat> the best bang for your buck, in my opinion, uh, when it comes to fit and finish, quality materials, uh, versatility, ergonomics, utility, Spyderco's the way to go. If you're looking for something like that, look at some Spyderco's. These things are hideous. 
when I first saw Spydercos, when I got into the knife community, I wouldn't even look at the specs on them. I thought they were so ugly. I was never going to own a Spyderco. I just knew that. Now I own, I think, 30 of them. <laughs> Once you get one in your hand, it just... Spyderco doesn't make pretty knives. You know, with the exception of maybe the the Paisan, the, the Nirvana, stuff like that. Stuff that's basically unattainable. Um, they don't make pretty knives. They don't make pocket jewelry. They make good, comfortable, ergonomic, you know, uh, uh, ut utility focused knives. They don't give a shit uh, about making them pretty, super, super aesthetically pleasing. Um, you know, they, they don't really focus much on that. Uh, what they want to give you is a good quality uh, utility tool that's versatile. Uh, and they've got just dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of different models uh, that you can choose from. And each one of those models, a lot of times, has a lot of different variants. Um, now, this is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Uh, this is the uh, Robin's Egg version that I got from River's Edge Cutlers. This is the exclusive, exclusive version that they uh, release from time to time. Uh, they only are going to make 100 of these. Uh, mine is number 16, uh, and they are only releasing 10 of them at a time. Uh, so just keep an eye on River's Edge Cutlery if you're interested in this knife. Uh, and the next time these drop, you will be able to pick one of those up. Uh, I've got multiple versions of multiple knives here just to show you the versatility of these knives, the variety that you've got, um, <clears throat> and the, um, the customization that you can do on these knives. I haven't customized any of my Spyderco knives, but everything is so interchangeable. You can change out colors, you can change out steels, you can change out hardware, you can change out anything that you want on these knives. They're, they're completely modul modular as long as they go with the same, uh, the same model. Uh, now, the Pair 3, uh, this is going to be a little bit smaller than the Paramilitary 2. Uh, they're around the same price. The, the PM2 is going to run you somewhere between $180 and $200 for the base models. Uh, and then they'll go up from there, depending on the steel, the materials that they use to put the thing together. Uh, now, these two, uh, the bigger knives, these are the Paramilitary 2s. This confuses a lot of people. I don't know why they named them the way they did. Uh, but these are the Pil Paramilitary 2s. And this is the Para 3, not the Paramilitary 3, just the Para 3. Uh, so, you know, if you're ever thinking about starting a channel or anything like that, and, you know, just make sure you don't call it Paramilitary 3. I do it all the time, but <laughs> it's not the end of the world. Uh, what do I have? What else do I have here? So, okay, so here's the Paramilitary series. There's more to it. There's the Military 2. There's the Military. Um, you know, they're, they're just, they're basically... Um, staples uh, of the knife community. Um, you know, when you come into the knife community, a lot of people are going to be introducing you to Spyderco knives, especially the paramilitary too, just because it's one of the most commonly carried knives uh, in, the, in the knife community today. Uh, but as far as Spyderco is concerned, like I said, a bunch of different models. This one is the Spyderco Smock. Uh, there is a knife maker out there. I can't remember his first name, but his last name is Smock, obviously. Uh, and this is the uh, aesthetic of his uh, knife making, his knife design. Um, he does a lot of custom knives. I don't know that he does a lot of production work, but he did collaborate with Spyderco uh, to make the Spyderco Smock. This is one of my favorite Spyderco knives just because of the shape of the blade, the way it's ground. Uh, you've got this little finger hole here, some jimping on the spine, laminate carbon fiber scales. Uh, and this appears to be a button lock, uh, but this is not a button lock. This is a button operated liner lock. I'm sorry, a button operated compression lock, which is kind of a liner lock, but it's just kind of a reversed uh, so that the liner isn't down here. It's up here instead. Uh, there is a stop pin here. So that rams up against the stop pin and then the compression lock comes out to push down uh, on the tang of the blade, which keeps this locked in very, very solid. Uh, good action on this guy. You've got a bunch of different scale options that you can purchase. Uh, and this is uh, operated with the thumb flick, the finger flick, or it's got a flipper uh, on the top here. Uh, very nice knife. I like this a lot. It's a little bit smaller, uh, but it's very comfortable for me. And I even bought my wife one because she liked it so much. Uh, next up on the list for Spyderco's are... 
Jesus, I can't believe I failed that. Um, next up on the list for Spyderco is the Manix 2. Uh, this particular version is the Manix 2 Lightweight. Uh, you've got Grivery Scales here with their, <clears throat> I can't remember what they call this, but uh, multi-directional uh, milling on the, uh, the Grivery there to give you some gripitude on the scales. Uh, you've got the... Uh, the bearing, the cage bearing lock uh, that is, I believe it's only used for the Manix. I don't think there's any other knives in Spyderco's collection that has the cage bearing lock. Uh, but when you're buying, if you're going to get a lightweight Manix 2, be very, very careful. Some of them have rivets, others have screws. The ones with the rivets you cannot take apart, uh, which bothers me, but I wasn't going to buy another lightweight just because I couldn't take this one apart. Uh, the Manix 2 is probably one of the most comfortable knives that Spyderco makes. Uh, along with its leaf-shaped blade, the, uh, I don't want to say extreme jimping, but they've got very fine, grippy jimping on all of, most of their knives. Uh, for Spyderco, the, the jimping is on the spine of the blade, or sorry, for the Manix 2, the jimping is on the spine of the blade towards the thumb area. Uh, you've also got some more jimping here, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, where your index finger goes when you choke up on the blade. Uh, you've also got some jimping here, right behind the first finger guard. Uh, and then there's some more jimping down here for the rest of your fingers. Uh, also, there's some more jimping up here um, for your thumb to sit on. Very grippy knife, very comfortable. Once you have this in your hand, uh, whether you're choked up or not, it's it's locked in. It's not going anywhere. You could use this fucking thing at the Vaseline factory. Absolutely love this knife. Uh, very easy to use. Very comfortable. Um, not huge. Not tiny. It's a good you know good size for everyday carry, in my opinion. Uh, you can use the hole there for the thumb flick or the middle finger flick, and that's the only way to uh, deploy this knife. You can also slow roll it. Uh, this guy, I believe, is running on Foster Bronze washers as well. Uh, next up is another Manix 2, uh, but this one is the XL version. Uh, so as you can see, it's just bigger. Uh, same stuff. Uh, S30V steel. <coughs> Excuse me. This one is in SPY 27, and this one is CTS 204P. Uh, so like I said, you've got a lot of different varieties with uh, blade steel, um, handle materials, uh, stuff like that, yeah, different colors, different just different aesthetics all the way around. Yes, they're ugly knives, but, but they're great utilitarian tools. They're very comfortable, uh, and, and I absolutely love them. I didn't expect to like these at all. Like I said, I fucking hated them when I first started collecting knives. Uh, but once I got one in my hand, I grew to appre appreciate these to the fucking moon and back. I love, love, love Spyderco knives. Um, obviously, like I said, you're getting into a little bit more expensive territory here. Uh, the <clears throat> the Manix 2 is going to cost you anywhere from $135 to $200. You can normally get the lightweight versions for around $135, $145. Uh, and then the G10 versions usually start out around, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the G10 versions usually start out around 200 and go up from there. Uh, the Manix 2 XL, I believe, is going to cost you a little bit more. I think that's like 250 or 275, something like that. Uh, the the, the Smock, uh, I think, also is going to cost you uh, around 200 bucks. Uh, next up is uh, my favorite knife in the whole wide world, other than my Zon, uh, which is the Spider Co. Shaman. Uh, this guy is is the center of a lot of debate, at least it has been in the past, uh, in the knife community. Uh, this is the original Shaman that I bought, uh, and this was the second one that I bought just because I wanted to have as many knives uh, in the avocado as I could get. Uh, the Shaman is probably the most ergonomically friendly knife in Spyderco's lineup, in my opinion. Uh, it's got a nice blade, a uh, nice thick blade stock. Uh, flat ground blade, which starts almost all the way to the top. This is almost a full flat ground uh, blade. I uh, got the same jimping as the PM2 has and the Manix, uh, except for on the scale. This is also a compression lock, just a regular compression lock. Fantastic action. You can even front the front flip this guy if uh, if you're you know if you're careful. You have to take some time to learn how to do it, uh, but it can be done. Uh, that was actually something that Metal Complex was uh, super duper surprised about because he saw this on a a reel or something that somebody was front flipping a Manix and he's like, you can't do that. And then he, he tried it on a video and he did like, you know, his, his brain exploding. It was just crazy. So yeah, you can front flip the Manix. Whoops. You can front flip the Manix if you, you know, practice it. It takes a little bit of practice just because the, uh, the ramp is so far down 
Uh, it's not higher up like it normally is with front flipping knives that are designed to be front flippers. Uh, but the compression lock on this guy, uh, the different uh, deployment methods, the, just the ergonomics on this thing are fantastic. It's not the best looking knife in the world, but the Shaman is definitely my favorite knife for rum, Spider Co. Okay, uh, let me get these guys closed. It's going to take me a minute. I'm sorry about that. And we're almost to the end here, guys. Uh, there's a few more knife companies that I want to show to you. Three more, I think. Uh, and then we will be all done. Um, so again, we're getting up into the two two fifty uh, territory here for price. Um, once you get to this point, you're kind of just like I don't know if you want to say you're playing with fire, but once you get into three and four hundred dollars, you're basically just going to spend whatever you need to spend to get the knife that you want. <laughs> At least that was my experience. Uh, so just be careful. You know, take your time when you're getting into this hobby. It's you know, if you go too far too fast, it can get a little crazy. Uh, and, and you just, you don't want to spend all your money uh, on, on knives that, <laughs> like, I guess my wife just says, you know, how many knives do you need? And I just, I just answered with all of them. Uh, so yeah, next one here is the, uh, the 8020.5. Uh, the 8020 uh, is extremely difficult to find. And when you do finally find it, it's, ridiculously expensive six seven eight hundred dollars sometimes especially if you're looking on the secondary market uh but the 20.5 is a fantastic knife good good edc size uh, it's about seven and a half inches overall i think let me see here one two three four five six seven so just just over 7.25 inches um you've got the shark lock on this guy which is a fantastic lock uh you can use it just like a bar lock you can use it to deploy the blade if you want to uh, you also have thumb studs, uh, and you have an opening hole that you can use to uh, deploy this guy. Very fidgety knife, uh, very easy to use. Obviously, you've got some aftermarket scales that you can get for this guy. A bent stainless steel pocket clip. You've got a backspacer here that you can get with the, um, the scales. I'm sorry, yeah, the scales from, uh, these came from Flytanium. Uh, they come in different colors. They also sell the backspacer for it. Uh, probably one of the most sought after knives in the knife community over the last uh, 12 months or so. Very, very popular. Uh, lots of jimping up on the spine of the blade. The thumb studs work fantastic. Uh, the G10 scales from Flytanium are great, uh, but a lot of the time you're going to find these in Gribery uh, or G10, uh, which, you know, that's it doesn't really matter, to, in my opinion, whether you have Gribery on, or G10 on this guy, but. The G10 definitely is more substantial, it's more comfortable, it feels better to me, I just don't like Gribery. Uh, but once you get up into this territory, you're spending, what are you spending on this guy? About 100, and, it's between 120 and $200, depending on what the the uh, the materials are. Sometimes they come in carbon fiber, sometimes they have them in titanium scales, uh, sometimes they do different blade steels, I believe this one is Aus 10A, yeah, Aus 10A. Uh, but they also make it in D2. They also make it in S35VN, I believe. And I'm not sure what else they make it in. But I know they make it in a few different steels. <clears throat> this guy, however, is going to come from China. If you buy an AD20, uh, you know, 90% of the time that's going to come from America. Unless you buy an AD20S, which is the AD20 Slim. That is also, I believe, uh, if I could be wrong, but I believe that's made in China as well. Uh, but yeah. This is probably where you're starting to get into the more popular knives, the production knives that are going to start running you $250, $300. Uh, so I believe this is, I, I feel like this is kind of like a, <clears throat> a transitional knife. Uh, you know, once you get into this price territory, it starts to get pretty dangerous. Uh, next up uh, is a knife that I consider uh, to be a very, very good knife. It's an American-made knife uh, from Doug Ritter um, and Hoke. Uh, 20 CV blade steel, G10 scales, uh, crossbar lock, uh, st bent stainless steel pocket clip, which I don't have on here, but that's just my preference. Uh, you've got some standoffs in the back here, whole bunch of body screws, but that's not a big deal. Um, Metal Complex calls this the um, the point of diminishing returns. So basically that means that you know, you're know you getting the best bang for your buck when it comes to quality build, materials, fit and finish, stuff like that. Uh, American made knife. Uh, for only, I believe, 160, yeah, 160 bucks uh, for an American-made knife uh, in G10 and 20 CB, uh, which is fantastic. This thing is great. Love the blade shape. Love the action. I, I'm gonna get another set of scales for this guy from um, from Original Goat. Uh, so as soon as I get those, I'll show this off again once I have the new set of scales on it. 
Um, and last but not least, this is kind of when you get into the $300 territory. Um, I don't nor excuse me, goodness, I don't normally recommend that people buy knives from this company because I just, I'm not a huge fan, but I do have two of their knives and that's because two of their knives are just great in my opinion. Good values, um, fantastic knives. Uh, this is the Benchmade uh, Super Freak. Uh, there is a Benchmade Freak. This one's a little bit different. I believe this one's an M4. Uh, you've got like multicolored G10 here with some metallic red standoffs, makes the stand out a little bit. Uh, crossbar lock, yes, that's M4 steel. Uh, almost kind of like the uh, leaf shade blade that you saw on the Spider Coast here. You can't choke up on this guy at all, but it's got a very ergonomically comfortable handle. Nice slicer, uh, almost a full flat grind. Uh, DLC coating on the blade, which is good because it's M4, which is not stainless. I can't have non-stainless steel because I live in Pennsylvania, which is the corrosion capital of the fucking planet. Uh, but this is a very, very good knife. If you're going to buy one knife uh, from Benchmade, uh, I would either buy the Super Freak or the Adamus. Uh, the Adamus is a, a big, chunky, hard-use knife, overbuilt, thick G10 scales, thick um, stainless steel liners, uh, which are milled out uh, to save weight. You've just got thumb studs here with uh, a coated blade, CPM crew or steel. Uh, and this is, in my opinion, one of the best Benchmade knives that there are out there. Uh, the Adamus is going to run you around 300 bucks. Uh, the Super Freak is going to cost you around 250 too. I think the Freak itself is like 160 or, or 180 something like that. Uh, but the Super Freak with the more premium materials uh, is going to run you a little bit more. So that's going to be around 250 bucks. Then the Adamus is going to be around 300. Um, the Adamus is probably one of the more popular knives in Benchmade's collection. They also have a mini version, which that one is uh, 260 dollars. Um, very comfortable knife. Uh, very good action. Um, nice and thick scales, thick handle. It fits into your hand very, very well. It fills out, fills out the hand very, very well. I love Crewwear Steel. I've never really done anything crazy with this knife, but I really love it. Um, nope, family's home, so the dogs are going to start barking. This is a good time as any to stop the video, guys. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Please like and subscribe. And stay up, weirdos. Take it easy. Bye.